In 2022, the first Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne glitch was found in the Steam version of the HD remaster. The ability to remove the main character Demifin from your party. Now, fast forward to 2023 and we can do crazy things like duplicating demon joining events to get a squad of 4 Dantes, going out of bounds to skip entire dungeons, or defeating Lucifer, the hardest boss in the game by simply running away. Nocturne is infamous for breaking its players, but today, I will show you how you can break Nocturne wide open. First, we need to talk about the glitch at the center of all the broken things you can do in this game. The Dismiss Demifin glitch, aka the lunch break. This one was discovered in 2022 by CardFed from the SMT and Persona speedrunning Discord. In Nocturne, you can remove or add demons to your party as you please, but you cannot do the same thing with the main character Demifiend. The Return to Stock option doesn't allow you to select him, and if you don't have any demons in your party, the game will prevent you from using the function altogether. But in the PC version of the HD remaster, we can circumvent that. To perform this glitch, you will need at the very least two demons. For this example, I'm going to use three. With three demons, you need to make sure you have two demons summoned in your party and at least one unsummoned demon in your stock. Once that's done, you open the menu, go into the party tab and select the return to stock. Then you use your mouse to bring the cursor on the screen and you hover over one of the demons in your stock. Now with either your controller or keyboard, you spam down and A repeatedly. If you did it right, after clicking the button to back out of the return to stock menu, the party info will update and Demifin will be dismissed. So what happens when you manage to send Demifin to the Shadow Realm? Well, the first thing worth noting is that without Demifiend, it's possible to remove all your demons until you have zero demons summoned. And then, if you enter a battle without having any demons, that will softlock the game. You can still toggle the auto button or move your mouse around, but that's about it. Another quirk of this glitch is that when Demifiend is dismissed, the demon you have in your first slot essentially becomes your new main character. So if they die, you will get the game over. Interestingly enough, the game doesn't let you summon more than three demons from the menu. This prevents you from putting a demon in that fourth slot left by Demifiend. But there are two ways to bypass this restriction. The first one is about demon joining events. In Nocturne, there are a couple of events where demons will join you outside of battle. This is the case for the demons you can obtain from the Shady Brokers in the Labyrinth of Amala. If you purchase one of these demons, it will automatically go into your fourth slot. The second method involves the skill Beacon Call. Beacon Call allows the user to randomly summon one of your demons from the stock during battle. And this also works for getting a fourth demon. Additionally, Beacon Call has a chance to summon Demifin, and as of now, this is the only way to get him back. By the way, Demifin will still cause the game over if he dies after being summoned, and the same thing goes for the demon in your first slot, meaning that now you have two game over conditions. Now, on its own, the lunch break glitch looks pretty useless. There is really no reason to use it unless your goal is trying to beat the game without using the Demifin. Hmm, why does that sound familiar? But here's the thing. Dismissing Demifin is actually important because it allows us to use the most powerful glitch in the game, Menu Storage. From here on out, everything that I will be covering in this video was discovered by the speedrunner Brotodile. They have also made a paste bin documenting these glitches and that was instrumental in the making of this video, so special thanks to them for doing that. So, Menu Storage. For this glitch to work, you need to make sure you have at least 9 demons in total, 4 demons summoned in your party, and 5 unsummoned demons in your stock. You will also need a skill beckon call on one of these demons. First, you perform the lunch break to get Demifin out of the party. You then go into battle and let your beckon call user summon a fourth demon. Once you are out of battle, you open the pause menu and then try to summon some demon from your stock. Exit the pause menu and then enter again. You will notice that the menu has turned completely dark. You can remove the black color by hitting either up or down three times then pressing A to open the Bagatama screen. And if you pay attention, you will notice that you can hear Demifin moving in the overworld while you are using the analog stick in the pose menu. To understand what this glitch does, it's important to establish how menus function normally. Whenever you summon the pose menu, the overworld interactions are disabled. This ensures that Demifin won't be moving while the player is navigating through the menus. Now, with menu storage, we can create a scenario where we have more than four demons in the active party, and when that happens, the game isn't able to disable the overworld interactions anymore, meaning that moving inside the menu will also make Demifin move in the overworld. Additionally, if you close the menu, you will lose menu storage and you will be forced to set it up again. One thing that's a bit tricky to get used to regarding menu storage is that your actions inside the menu affect the overworld, but you cannot see what's happening because of the pause menu screen. So if you need to reach a specific area, you will have to navigate blindly. Fortunately, there is a way to help with this and it has to do with a glitch called transparent menu storage. For this one, we will need to be close to a Cathedral of Shadows, the facility for demon fusion. First, you perform menu storage in front of the door to the Cathedral of Shadows and navigate inside the pause menu to reach the config screen. Then you enter inside the Cathedral. 
Since you have to walk blindly, it's important to position yourself so that the door is in front of you or behind you. Once you are inside, you go to the Demon Compendium and view a Demon's stats. This will turn the pose menu transparent. Now you need to navigate out of the Cathedral of Shadows without closing the pose menu. You can press B twice to get out of the Compendium and then go over the Exit option and press A to get out of the Cathedral. So, about menu storage. This glitch allows you to simultaneously interact with the overworld while using the menu. This can be abused to do stuff like using healing items from the pose menu to heal your demons during a battle. It's pretty cool, but there are even more broken things that we can do with menu storage, and it's time to talk about one of them. Load warping. You see, loading the game while in menu storage behaves very differently from how it usually works. Normally, when you load a save file, the game loads two things, Demifin's physical location and the rest of the data tied to that save. However, when you load a save file while in menu storage, it only takes the rest of the data. The game will keep Demifin's current physical location. This means that we can warp a save file into the location of another one, and this allows us to do various interesting things. Since everything except the physical location is loaded, load warping can be used to reset the encounter rate, and this comes in handy for a specific section of the game, the Curse Corridor. If you are playing the Maniacs or Chronicle version of this game, you get access to a new dungeon called the Labyrinth of Amala. Inside the second floor of this dungeon, there is an NPC Ifrit who will give you 250k maka the first time you get to him. This is great, but in order to reach Ifrit, you need to go through the Curse Corridor. In this section of the dungeon, your party will take damage while you walk, and random encounters in here have enemies that are a lot stronger than anything you've seen so far. It's usually pretty difficult to get through this part, but luckily for us, we have the perfect glitch for the situation. This icon here is the panic meter, and it will change color based on how close you are from getting a random encounter. As you walk around, it will go from yellow to orange, and then red when you are about to get jumped by the demons. To avoid that from happening, you can wait until the panic meter turns red, then perform the menu storage glitch, and once that's done, you go into load and you select a save file where you have four demons in your active party. If you then pause and unpause the game, you will notice that Demivin is still in the same location, but the meter that used to be red is now yellow. Now you can just repeat this process over and over to go through this entire section without ever seeing a random encounter once. Another thing that we can do with this glitch is warping a save file into a boss fight that has already been defeated. For that, we will need two save files. One where the boss is alive, and one where it isn't. Let's call them save 1 and save 2. With save 1, you go near the boss and perform menu storage. Then, you trigger the boss fight and before the battle transition happens, you load save 2. If you did it right, after the black screen fades, you will see that your party from save 2 has been loaded in. This can be done if you want to grind EXP on the boss that's easy to reach and kill. Load warping allows us to warp a save file into any dialogue event that is no longer accessible. And one of the most useful applications for this glitch has to do with the Ifrit you meet inside the second Calabar. Picture this scenario. You just managed to get through the corridor, and now you can talk to Ifrit to get your cash prize, but there is an issue. It's a one-time event. This means that once you receive the money, you won't be able to get it again anymore. Unless you use load warping. The principle is similar to using load warping to redo a boss fight. You need a save file where you didn't get the maca, and another save where you took it. With the saves that didn't trigger the event, you go near Ifrit and perform menu storage. You then trigger the dialogue, and before Ifrit gives you the money, you load the second save file that already received the maca. And just like that, you manage to receive 250k maca again. Now, if you want to repeat this, you just need to get out of the Kaopa and go back to the terminal at the entrance of the labyrinth to save your game. After that, you reload the save file that didn't trigger the Ifrit event yet, go down to meet Ifrit, then rinse and repeat. This is great because it means that we can infinitely duplicate the Ifrit event, but unfortunately, it forces us to do two trips. One for leaving the Kalpa to save the game, and one for reaching Ifrit again. Fortunately for us, there is another glitch that we can use to save a lot of time with duping Ifrit, and it's called Ladder Suspending. Normally, when you suspend your progress, the game sends you back to the title screen. This is done to prevent you from using Suspend to save and continue playing the game. However, something interesting happens when you use menu storage to suspend your game while climbing a ladder. If you manage to time the suspend during the ladder climbing animation, the game will create a suspend save, but you won't be sent back to the title screen. It will simply look like you transition from one room to another. Essentially, this glitch allows us to create a save in the place where you normally wouldn't be able to. This is extremely useful for duping the Ifrit event because there is a ladder in the room that we can use to perform the glitch. So now we can navigate through the curse corridor and go down the ladder leading to Ifrit's room, face the ladder and activate menu storage, climb the ladder and time the suspend before the climbing animation ends to perform the ladder suspend glitch, then we use load warping to dupe the maca and we get out of the kalpa to save our game. And now, if we want to keep duping, instead of having to go through the second kappa again, we can just go to the title screen and load the suspense save we made earlier to be near Ifrit. With this strat, you only need to go through the second kappa once, when you are leaving to save. 
If you plan to keep duping though, just make sure you don't forget to set up a ladder suspend before you start talking to Ifrit. One thing that you need to keep in mind when performing the ladder suspend glitch is that you'd want to do it when going up the ladder rather than going down. This is because performing this glitch will put Demifin out of bound. In Nocturne, the out of bound behavior is such that if Demifin isn't standing on solid ground, he will descend vertically with each step he takes. When you suspend while going up, the game places Demifin out of bounds above the ladder. This isn't a problem because Demifin will eventually touch the ground. But when you suspend while going down, Demifin will be placed slightly below ground and because of how being out of bound works, with each step he takes, he will keep descending into the abyss without a way to get back to solid ground. The fact that ladder suspending puts Demifin out of bound is pretty convenient because we can abuse this to skip parts of the game like the fifth Kalpa. After reaching the end of the dungeon, normally you have to defeat Metatron in order to complete the Labyrinth of Amala. But if you don't feel like doing that, you can use the ladder in this room to set up a suspend save and after reloading it, you go out of bounds. What's interesting about being out of bound in Nocturne is that the floor extends slightly past the walls of the room. As long as you stay close to the room, you can walk around it while out of bounds. The walls are only one way solid, so if you are out of bound, you can easily re-enter inbound. Thanks to this glitch, we can easily skip the Metatron fight by going out of bound and walking around until we get to the other end of the room. The only flaw with this glitch is that it does require a ladder to function and that limits our ability to go out of bounds. That is what I would normally say, but there is another glitch that we can use to go out of bounds almost anywhere. And it's called the cutscene storage glitch. This glitch allows us to store a cutscene while we are playing and this disables all collision hitboxes, thus allowing us to clip through any wall or door in the game. Let me use this dungeon as an example. This is the Diet Building. To complete this one, you need to defeat Samael, but in order to reach that demon, you need to fully explore the place and go through a gauntlet of four bosses. Surt, Mada, Mott, and Mithra. That's how it normally works, but with cut-in storage, we can easily clip through the wall and walk around until we reach the elevator leading to Samael. Here is how you do it. First, you find the spot you want to clip through and stand as close as possible to the wall or door. You then open the pause menu and suspend your game. From the title screen, you load into a different save file where you will play a cutscene to activate the glitch. At the entrance of the labyrinth of Amala, a cutscene plays whenever you check the peephole. This one is perfect for the glitch, so we will be using a save file at the entrance of the labyrinth. After loading that save file, you activate menu storage and you trigger the cutscene by walking forward and pressing A. While the cutscene is playing, go to the load save file screen, but instead of loading a file, you simply back out. For whatever reason, when doing this, the game will kick you out of the title screen and you will notice that the cutscene is still playing. You then click continue and once your suspended save has been loaded, you will notice that all collision hitboxes have been disabled. Now you need to move a little bit forward to clip through the wall. After moving, you pause and suspend the game before the cutscene finishes. Doing this will cancel the cutscene. Once that's done, you just need to continue your suspended save. Now you should be slightly inside the wall and you can fully clip through it to get to your location. An interesting byproduct of using this glitch is that it makes the screen look wobbly, which is kinda funny. If you want to stop that, you just need to save at the terminal or close your game. This glitch can also be used to duplicate the joining events for Dante and Raido, but since no one cares about this guy, I'm going to demonstrate how the glitch works on El Dante, el exterminador de demonios. In the Maniac's version of Nocturne, when you make it to the fifth Kalpa, you will meet Dante and get the chance to recruit him. Now, if we use cutscene storage, it's actually possible to duplicate this joining event in order to get multiple copies of Dante. We can achieve this by storing the Dante cutscene, loading a save file, then hitting yes to let him join while the dialogue continues to play in that save. Then, you need to interrupt the cutscene before it totally finishes by suspending the game. When you resume the suspended save, you will have another Dante in your party and you can repeat this process until you get a squad of 4 Dante. Normally, Dante cannot be removed from your stock after he joins, but interestingly enough, you can part with the Dante's obtained through the glitch. Something pretty funny that you can do after assembling your squad is using load warping to challenge Dante with your four Dantes. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Another cool thing that we can do with this glitch is going out of bounds to interact with debug objects. There are a couple of unused objects that were left in the game. These objects tend to be in locations that you cannot normally access. Some of them aren't really useful though. 
For example, if we use cutscene storage and load the save file inside the Shinjuku Medical Center, the game will put us in a spot where we can interact with a debug object allowing us to obtain the first Magatama Marugareth. This is fairly useless because getting a Magatama a second time doesn't do anything, but there are instances where interacting with a debug object can be useful, like for the Amala Temple. Normally, in this section of the game, you have to defeat three bosses in order to make the central pyramid descend, but it's actually possible to skip this section completely. Near the entrance of the first Amala Temple room, there are two adult-bound debug objects, one on the west side and one on the east side. With cutting storage, we can walk through the walls and that allows us to interact with these objects. Once you get close enough, the examine message will pop up and after interacting with the dummy invisible object, you will get a couple of options. If you activate the set pyramidion option, it will put the game in a state where you have already used the key item called the Yahiro no Imorogi to unlock the Tower of Kagutsushi, and this allows you to completely skip this section of the game to enter inside the final dungeon pretty early. As for the other two options, it looks like Isamu Fused with God puts the temple in the state it's normally in after you beat the three bosses. So after Isamu summons Noah. And lastly, God Pyramidion puts the game in the state it's normally in after you complete the diet building, so upon entering, you will trigger the cutscene where you use the Yahiro no Imorogi to summon the Tower of Kagutsushi. Interestingly enough, this cutscene will trigger whether you have the key item required or not, showcasing that these items are actually meaningless. Everything is handled by story flags, so as long as you meet the requirements, some events will play out even if you do not have the required item for said events. Now, so far I've mostly looked at what you can do outside of battles, but what about glitches working during a battle? Well, there are a couple of those, like a glitch called Battle Interruption. For this one, you need to activate the transparent menu storage and then enter a battle. From the pause menu, you go to the load screen, but instead of loading a save file, you back out. This will make the game kick you out of the title screen while menu storage is still active. If you then load a save, you will see all the 3D models of the enemies and your party from that battle we interrupted. The same goes for the battle menu UI. Whenever you go to a new area or a new room, you will still be able to see those 3D models following you around. By the way, you can enter a battle and repeat this glitch to stack even more demons on the screen as many times as you want. They will also show up in cutscenes and that creates some pretty funky results. You have done well to make it here. Therefore, our friendship dies here. We are as fate we so. Now, I know this glitch looks really goofy, but it actually serves a purpose outside of creating chaos on the screen. Battle interruption sends you back to the title screen while menu storage is still active. This allows us to carry menu storage into a save file that doesn't have the ability to activate it. For example, because that save doesn't have enough demons to perform the glitch. And one useful thing that we can do with it is using battle interruption to access the fifth kalpa early. For that, we are going to need two saves. One save in the Shinjuku Medical Center that hasn't gone through the tutorial yet, and another save file where we can use menu storage and we have obtained the menorah of sovereignty. So in the menu storage save file, we are going to activate transparent menu storage to make things easier. After that, we go into a battle and click on load, then we back out once to get sent to the title screen. Then we load our medical center save. Next, we navigate through the dungeon until we reach the elevator doors leading to the tutorial area. Once we are there, we click on load and then we load our save file that's from later into the game. Now we just need to run through the area until we get to the final room. Once we are there, we activate menu storage and enter inside the room. While the old man is talking, you use menu storage to suspend the game, and when you try to load that suspended save, you will see that the location is actually the bottom floor of the fifth kalpa. It turns out that the room at the end of the tutorial is exactly the same room that shows up at the end of the fifth kalpa. From there, you can go down the elevator to obtain pierce early and lock yourself into the true demon ending, or leave the room and make your way backwards to get out of the fifth kalpa and recruit El Dante, el exterminador de demonios. One thing that's pretty neat if you decide to go through the fifth kalpa backwards is that once you enter inside this room, you won't have to fight Metatron. Normally, when you enter inside the room, it will trigger the Metatron cutscene right away, but when you enter the room from the other side, it doesn't trigger the boss fight. Thanks to that, you can fully get past this place. The next glitch I want to cover is called Auto Memory Storage, and as the name implies, it has to do with the auto memory. When you have it on, this feature allows you to repeat the action your unit previously performed. 
Now, what's interesting is that if you use menu storage to load a save file during a battle, the game will immediately use the auto action stored for that character whose turn it is. Even if that auto action is a move you shouldn't be able to use normally. This is extremely useful because it allows us to perform two actions that are normally forbidden during boss fights, escaping and using the pot of death. During a boss encounter, the game will prevent you from using any command to run away from the fight, like the retreat command, the smoke ball item, or the skill trafuri. The same goes for the pot of death, an item that drops the HP of all enemies to one. But with auto memory storage, we can actually use those. As an example, let me show you how we can use trafuri during the battle avatar fight. First, you go into the config menu and make sure that auto memory is set to on. Then you go into a battle and with the specific demon you will use in the boss fight, you use the action you want to store in your auto memory. After that, you win or exit the battle without changing the stored auto memory action on that demon and you save your game. Next, you activate menu storage, enter the boss battle, and on the turn of the demon who has the stored action you want to use, you load the save file you previously made. If you did it right, after loading the save, the screen will go black and you will be able to hear the sound of the action your demon just performed. Another thing that you might have noticed is that after the black screen goes away, the cutscene you get for defeating Balavatar will play, even though we didn't beat her. You see, usually escaping from a boss fight isn't useful because the battle isn't considered won. But there are specific boss fights where escaping actually counts as a win. This is true for the three recent bosses, Ariman, Noah, and Balavatar. And we can also do the same thing against Lucifer, the true final boss of Nocturne. For this one, I'm gonna use transparent menu storage to make it easier to understand. Escaping from Lucifer works similarly to what I explained above, but there is something you need to keep in mind. Lucifer is part of a boss gauntlet where you have to fight Kagutsushi first. In order to use the glitch on Lucy, we need to beat Kagutsushi normally because using auto memory storage requires loading a save file and when you do that, menu storage goes away and you don't get the opportunity to set it up before the second battle. That's why the strat for using auto memory storage against this boss is to beat Kagutsushi normally and then perform the glitch against Lucifer. If you did this right, congrats! You just managed to beat the hardest boss in the entire game by simply running away from it. And now it's time to talk about a weird bug. Uh, no, not that type of bug. This one is about the boss Ariman, and it was brought to my attention by the challenge runner King Tight Knight. So Ariman is one of the three recent bosses you have to fight in the end game of Nocturne, and during the first phase of the fight, he has a gimmick. Ariman will forbid a specific action, and if you perform what's currently forbidden, he will counterattack with Health Call, a move that's guaranteed to kill you. Now, what's interesting about Nocturne is that unlike the newer Shin Megami Tensei games where bosses have infinite MP, in this one they can run out. Why am I mentioning this, you may ask? Well, that's because something really bizarre happens when Ariman tries to go for Health Call when he doesn't have enough MP. Did you catch that? If you did, your eyes aren't deceiving you. Ariman just used my own Preston icon to cast a skill. In this game, some bosses have attacks that don't cost any MP whatsoever. This is the case for Lucifer, the true final boss of the game, when he goes for his unique moves like Root of Evil. But for Hell's Call, it's a different story. I always assumed that this move was a passive skill that functioned similarly to the passive skill counter, but that isn't the case. If you use tools like Cheat Engine, it's possible to give yourself whatever skill you want. This allows us to equip enemy-only skills, and doing that with Hell's Call reveals that it's actually an attack that costs 1 MP. And it looks like when Ariman runs out of MP, Isehai will decide to use one of your Preston icons to cast a skill. This to me looks like a bug that wasn't noticed by Atlas, and it's honestly not that surprising to imagine why they would miss it. Ariman only uses Hell's Call in his first phase, so the likelihood that someone would be stuck in phase 1 long enough for Ariman to run out of MP is extremely low. Once again, I would like to give a big shout out and thank you to Brotodile for its involvement in the making of this video. I didn't cover all the intricate details surrounding these glitches, so if you want to learn more, feel free to check the link to the pastebin they made in the description below. Also, Brotodile has been speedrunning Nocturne, so if you want to see someone putting all these glitches to good use, you can do so by clicking on the link right here.